cow stomach? Yeah. Hold on, let me wash my hands. Just good. Ready. Ready. Welcome to Namibia, one of the most remarkable countries in Africa and the world. The culture here is diverse and dynamic, with roots that date back thousands of years. Here, this vast landscape stretches out wider than Texas, but they only have a population of 2.5 million. A big chunk of those people live in the country's capital, Windhoek. It means windy corner. People from every corner of this country have settled here, bringing their culture. German here is a local language. And their cuisine. I like this one. It's got some imperfections. They're all kind of unique. Today, we're going on an all-out street food mission. I've never seen someone really take apart the whole chicken while the guts are still in there. Trying it all from the delicious. I'm having a mouth gasm. To the straight up. Um bizarre. You can do it! Welcome to Street Food Namibia Style. I'm a little curious what's going on here. I look across this parking lot. It literally says uh, Superstore right across the street. Then you guys are set up here. I mean, what is this? This would be the open market because okay. there's no roof. Right. And that would be the supermarket. With the roof. With the right. roof. Right. Slick the Dick. That's the name he goes by. He's traveled the world, even lived in Beijing for a while. Ten years ago, he became the country's first stand-up comedian. So here you are, one of the biggest comedians in the land. Today, Slick will be my sidekick, walking me through the complicated street food culture of Windhoek. But how does it work? Like, the supermarket owners don't care that people are out here? Not at all. They call it competition is good. Really? It makes you work a little harder. That's awesome. This open market is a supermarket in itself, run by several independent vendors and supported by walk-up traffic like me. First of all, what's your name? Memory. Memory? Yes. Oh, that's a great name. I hope I can remember it. Memory. Memory. Yes. Memory. Yes. Memory. Yes. Memory. Memory. Hold on. Hold on. Memory, 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 memory. I do remember following Memory to the nearby butcher shop this morning, watching her buy fresh cuts of meat and sausage. Her specialty, turning this note into a pile of cash in one day. <laughs> What are your specialties? Sausage, uh, dry meat. What do you think I should try today? Maybe the burrowurst. Burrowurst. Burre. Burre. Burrowurst. And which one is the burrowurst? Yeah, it's inside here. Yeah, burrowurst is inside there. <laughs> this sausage is a mixture of beef and mutton fat nestled inside a hot dog bun. Hey, is this bread from the supermarket? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Quick. She adds some homemade salsa, a mix of onion, tomato, green bell pepper, some oil, vinegar, and barbecue spices. And this is my next mix is tomato sauce. So you made this? Yes, Tommy Mayo. Tommy Mayo, that sounds awesome. Thank you very much. That Welcome. Looks stunning. Oh. This is really delicious. It's no joke. I mean, it just reminds me of a classic kind of bratwurst, but with um, delicious toppings. The tome mayo is a killer. This is fantastic. That's how you say it's really nice. My shatta. My shatta. My shatta. Yes. How long have you been here? Has this always been your spot? Like for three years. I mean, just looking, it can look kind of random, but there's nothing random about this. Nothing at all. If I come up here with my Weber grill, start cooking hot dogs down there, it's going to be a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. you cannot just come like they to stay, you come, right? Because all people here, they are in their own places. In fact, this place is supported by the government. Each of these vendors has a space assigned to them, so it's completely legit, but it's not without its own challenges. Rosalia has had her spot for four years. She can feel the struggle as much as anyone here. There's no electricity and no water, so each day she must bring her own. But on the bright side, the meat she's cooking up is conveniently located nearby. Do you think that cow was alive this morning? The owner used to go get it somewhere at the farmer. I just think it must be fresh because the butcher doesn't have any ice or refrigeration. This cow has probably woke up this morning thinking it was going to be a good day. Well, sorry. Now nah, it's a good meal. This area will likely grow and become more developed over time. That's what happened here at Wernhill Flea Market. Years ago, vendors served food under this bridge, but the conditions were chaotic and unsanitary. Now, the government built permanent stalls where you can witness all kinds of unique local classics. There's so much going on here. There's the more common foods, lots of fried bread, pasta, macaroni. Here, we saw this earlier at the other market. This is the pop. Yeah, pop. Every region of the world has their staple carbohydrate. Here, it's pop, 
like a dense porridge made from mahangu or pearl millet. Boiled with hot water, then left to cool until it becomes solid enough to handle by hand. On this side, some tripe. Is that a cow stomach? Yeah, that's cow stomach. It can be kind of bitter sometimes. Sometimes, you have to cook it for a while, get that initial bitter flavor out, and you spice it up, and you get a better flavor. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for that too. Usually go with the spoon or the hands? Hands usually, hands is better. Just Good, I'm gonna try just to pop it first. Muhanga, mahangu. Mahangu. It has almost no flavor. The flavor comes from whatever you add to it. Mm, like tofu or something exactly. like that. Exactly. I think we gotta go for the tripe. Oh boy. A little bit of mahangu, a little bit of tripe. It's intense. It's, it's super animally flavor. It's like I know this cow better than I ever intended to know this cow. <laughs> you almost gotta work with your teeth to really get it down there. It's not like no. regular beef. They did a pretty good job addressing the gaminess, but it's still there. Mm. What's your name? Herta. Herta. Yes. Cool. Sunny. Sunny. Well, yeah, not like the Japanese brand, but like uh, the, like the weather. And what's your name? Aina. This is my dude, uh, Slick the Dick. <laughs> Herta and Hilma's business was passed down from their mother. They offer a crazy amount of food, even pop. What is the dish that people always come back here for? Most of the time is fat cakes. Fat cake. Yeah. Nice. That was my nickname in middle school. <laughs> I was uh, a sad kid. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we're here for this. But since they're also churning out one of the city's favorites, we'll try that too. Yeast and dough made from corn flour, blobbed and dropped in oil, then rotated around until they're golden brown. Oh, ho, ho. goes down every time. So it's normal to eat it plain if you yeah. want to. You can dip it in sauce, or if you're eating like some meat, maybe put the meat in between. I like that, this is fantastic. Super crunchy on the outside, just incredibly doughy on the inside. What time do you get out of here? Seven. Oh, long day. Full day. Yeah. All right. Uh, sounds like I'm trying to pick her up. Are we just waiting for the number? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the dish you're making right now. What is the name of this dish? Scrambled eggs. Scrambled egg. Yeah, also chicken liver. Oh, you're going to put chicken liver as well? Yes. In a pot, she fries some veggies, adds turmeric, eggs, mixes that, then the chicken liver. Pile on some spices and finish up the cooking. Side that with another local favorite, macaroni. <laughs> I got you a, what is this? A reboost energy. This assumes you are already boosted at one point. Yes, another boost. Cheers. I'm just gonna jump into it. I'm gonna try just some of the egg at first. That's dynamite. That's good. That's very good. It's just like a savory scrambled egg and it tastes like there's salsa mixed into it. Have you had it in this style? Not specifically in this style. I've had it more full boiled egg wrapped with the liver and a little bit of intestine together. This is like the metropolitan version. Yeah. I'm gonna get some egg now with the liver. I'm done with that. What do you think? It's gonna work. The chicken livery can be kind of dry, but yeah, with the egg, it's a lot better. It goes down easy. On the side here, too, not mac and cheese. It's mac and mac. We have a barbecue culture. And mac, a little bit of mayo on it, it's a staple when we're having a barbecue. We call it a braai. Namibia has a long, brutal, and complicated history. For thousands of years, traditional ways of life carried on without interruption. But in 1884, Namibia was colonized by Germany, which led to conflict and massive bloodshed. In 1915, the country was captured by South Africa, and it wasn't until 1988 that Namibia became independent. There can be good and bad from these types of bad things that happen. Of course, there's nothing good about a fucking genocide, but what good came from colonialism, if any? Infrastructural development and a lot of the systems were set up during colonialism. That I could say is good, but the way it happened, I don't think necessarily that was good. With the strong influence the Germans have had here, do you think there's any parts that, of German culture that have just rubbed off into the culture at large? I can't say like being on time has necessarily rubbed off. We still have applied a lot of African time here. Okay. When someone says I'll be there now, they mean in a little bit. Right. Give me some time, but I'll be there now. Oh my God. What means actually now? It would be I'm here. Oh. <laughs>
the money, the press will be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. We are in the market. Like it seems like it started randomly and then parts of it became permanent over time. Well, that's exactly what happened. They call it Tukonjeni market, which means let's fight for it. Oh. Market. It probably has the largest space, stretches out from where we are till first part of the CBD. What's CBD? Central Business District. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the, like the weed oil. <laughs> Who's coming here? Everyone, really. You know, someone passing by, a student coming from school, someone coming to buy some food for lunch. So the marketplace is huge. Here in her restaurant, she's offering a long menu of foods I've never even heard of. But I'm here for one in particular, the walkie-talkie. It's the runaway chicken. The runaway chicken. It has muscle on it. These are different than other types of chickens? Well, we like to think so, because we, we assume they walk a lot in a field somewhere, and that's the only reason we call it marathon. Walkie-talkie. This part does the walkie, this part does the talkie. We're eating both and nothing else. I've had something similar in Madagascar, but here she cooks it in her own way. I've never seen someone really take apart the whole chicken while the guts are still in there. Ooh, oh, it's yeah. unrecognizable. She's cutting the face right off. The back side of the chicken we used to be a male delicacy only. Why is that? Patriarchy. Okay. <laughs> cool. I mean, the walkie-talkie is cooked in a pot. Then her special ingredient, curry vegetable soup. Add some tomatoes and cook it a bit more until her culinary instincts tell her it's finished. What's this? Piece of head? Yeah, that's a piece of head. I'm gonna try it out. It's a crunchy. That's super good. She put in some miscellaneous parts, some extra surprises. Now, does she throw away the fingernails? We usually get rid of. You gotta file it or get fake ones. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm, mmm. These are some of the better chicken feet I had. It's soft, it's not crazy soft, like. Gooey and gelatinous. This is like that middle texture. It's like real kind of. The heads are almost unrecognizable at this point. You can clear the bones away and just go right for the brain. Going around the world, having lived in Asia a number of years, I really opened up my mind to trying different unique foods. Have you ever seen anything like that? Have not. Your ever. face doesn't look happy. But in the US, chicken feet is just not gonna happen. It's not a thing. They're freaked out by it. No? No. The US should have a little bit of everything. Yeah, we don't. I think what people in the US are most freaked out about is just weird textures. Things that are too fatty or jiggly or oily. Even though a lot of the people in the US are kind of fat fatty and, and jiggly, jiggly and, and oily. oily. <laughs> <laughs> They're missing out. This is good. They're totally missing out. I love it. Today, my man Slick has saved the best for last. This is Single Quarters, one of the most popular markets in Winto. I'm seeing a lot of foods I've not seen before. First of all, what is this one? That is a form of dry spinach. Oh, it's just been kind of dried in pancakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the thing that catches my eye most. These are worms. This is the Mopani worm. From the Mopani tree. From the Mopani tree. They can be everywhere. Like, I'm talking everywhere. Do you know the method for getting them like this? You kill them, you just sort of press your thumb down and you go <laughs> <laughs> And you dry them out, you boil them or you fry them. Some people prefer to eat them, a little bit of soup. I prefer them fried. All right, I'm gonna eat, oh, this is a monster one right here. You can do it! Oh, I know I can do it. A lot of stuff that broke off. It's a little bit of dirt. It's a little crunchy. It absorbs the water. I could really use a Diet Coke. I forgot I have my coffee right here. <laughs> it is cheating. Slightly cheating, so we have to share. <laughs> Very nice, but you know, it is still a raw ingredient. <laughs> this is Kapana. This is Kapana, one of Namibia's favorite delicacies. I can see in the back, there's huge cuts of meat. Like there's like a half a cow on the table back there. Then as you move up, it's been sliced and diced a bit more. Here he's actually grilling it. From here we just order and we start digging in. It's gonna create some space for us. Oh, we're gonna eat it right off the grill. Right off the grill. Oh, that's fantastic. It's simple. Point to what you want and hope they see you. Yes. All good. They chop it down to beautiful bite-sized portions and you toss them back. Go in, Let's do it. take a piece, dip in some of the spice here. Oh, there's some spice in this cardboard box. Oh, it's delicious. Hot and juicy, right off the grill. The only struggle here is the uh, the fumes coming off the grill. Hold on, give me a second. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. That's way better. What's nice is if you take a one piece of meat, take a piece of liver, and some fat. Oh, you make it a little like, animal sandwich. Yeah, that's what you do. Are you able to take me seriously still as we 
talk here. I'm trying. <laughs> okay, good. What I really like about this is since it's so hot, even a cut of meat that's not the best cut of meat, not the juiciest, is still gonna taste tremendous. Cause it's coming right off the grill. This has become so popular that people come from everywhere to eat this. Even her behind me is just like, sorry, <laughs> can I get in? I know you're shooting the show, but I don't care. Fantastic. <laughs> Well guys, that's our whole video. That's street food here in Windhoek. What was your favorite food? Uh, I gotta say the tripe and the reboost. Yeah. <laughs> it's a deadly combo. It's been one day and already this country, this city is blowing my mind. Next time, we're headed out of the country's capital and into the unknown. Traveling back in time to a way of life that's fading fast. Hey guys, how's it going with that quarantine? More like quarantine, am I right? Mm. If you're anything like me, you're probably stuffing yourself twice a day. Listen, we're gonna get through this. I'm not talking about the apocalypse. I don't know anything about that. I'm talking about this constant stomach stretching that we keep doing, but if we move forward, if we persevere, at the end of the day, we can call ourselves food coma survivors. Buy the shirt. And we're donating 25% of the profits from this campaign to Feed America's COVID-19 response fund. They are assisting food banks and helping people across America who are in need. So it's a cool shirt. It's a great cause. Thank you guys for the support. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10 person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q and A's and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, you can follow Slick the Dick on Instagram, and my video is now demonetized. <laughs> that is it for this one. We will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.